this Atlas Master Series locomotive does not work on my Digitrax layout with this DCC board. Now, I don't know if there's an issue with the motor or what, or it's just the DCC board is not compatible. The trucks move freely, so it's not binding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change out this board with a DCC board from another model. And here's the, the model I'm working with here. A number of years ago, like five or six years ago, when I was first getting into the hobby, well, I was all gung-ho about it, and I started buying up a bunch of stuff. And I bought this Walther's Proto GP20. And, you know, now that I've somewhat recently got a layout going, about six months ago, I have a functioning layout now, and I started taking all these locomotives I bought out of the boxes and started running them on the layout. Well, this locomotive, I had all kinds of troubles with it. It wouldn't run well. It was intermittent. And the couplers were pointing off in wonky angles. And what I was thinking is, I was thinking these platforms were warped because the couplers were sticking up at angles, you know, pointing upwards. <laughs> And so I was going to change out the couplers and see if I could straighten this thing out. And I started taking the model apart to see if I could straighten it out, try to figure out what was wrong. And I took the shell off, and I took the weight off, and the frame fell apart. So the frame was broken. And so that's why the couplers were at crazy angles. And this is a brand new locomotive. I mean, it had never been run. The box was in perfect condition, so it's not like it, you know, had a shipping accident. And so this frame is just full of cracks. I mean, it, it just it just crumbles apart. So obviously it's a bad casting. And there's, I mean, there's nothing I can do with it. So it's it'll just be relegated to the scrap bin and I'll try to salvage what I can from it. So that's my that's my mission here. I'm going to see if I can mount this DCC board in that Atlas GP40 and get that locomotive going. First thing I need to do is understand how this is wired. I'm going to take my multimeter. I'm going to set the function to beep. So if I have a short it beeps, so I don't have to pay any attention to the display. So I'm going to figure out here how my trucks are wired. I have a real good connection to that side of the board. Yeah, a real good connection there. Okay, so each side of the truck goes to the board here. And I'm sure it's the same in the back. It is. Okay, so now I know how the trucks are wired from Atlas with this board. So each side of the trucks, this wires one side of the truck, one side of the truck, one side of the truck, one side of the truck. Right, you notice with the board here from the GP20, so I have a connector here, TRK truck, TRK truck. And here's the connector that plugs into the board. So I'm going to check to see how this is done. And I took a piece of copper wire flattened it and was able to slide it in here. So 
so. This side of the truck makes contact with the black wire. This side of the truck makes contact, this side of the truck makes contact with the red wire. So it's wired the same as the Atlas, but instead of using two black wires, there's a red and black wire for right and left. So when I wire it up to the Atlas trucks, it, it won't be an issue. I have the GP20 motor taped in place. I have the GP40 universal joints and these slide couplers connected to the GP20 motor. So they connect to the GP40 trucks. And I just have the motor taped in place because it appears the GP40 motor is bad. So let's see if this thing works. Well, the wheels on the trucks might be a little bit dirty. But, uh, and the, the lube in the trucks might, might be a little thick. I'll go ahead and run it a little bit. See if things will loosen up. All right. Well, it runs. I think I'm going to need to disassemble the trucks and give those a good cleaning. And I'm going to have to figure out a way to secure the motor in there. What I want to do right now is I need to be able to set this Walther's Proto motor into this Atlas frame. And right now, the motor sits up way too high. I know the lighting isn't very good here. But, uh, so what I'm going to do is I have this big old die grinder here and from working on old muscle cars for 45 plus years. I have a bunch of these tools. It's a little heavy handed for a HO scale locomotive but I'll use it to grind out some of this area right here until the motor fits down in there. I've ground out the frame for the Walther's Proto motor So that sits down in there pretty well. I don't have a way to secure it. So what I think I'm going to try is I'm going to try some 3M double-sided tape. This stuff's pretty sticky. So I'm going to go ahead and try that. I'm going to put some of that in there and then see if I can just stick the motor down to the double-sided tape. I have the motor secured with double-sided tape. Seems to be stuck on there pretty well. And I have the connections soldered up so it's ready to plug into the DCC board. I'm going to end this here because I have some things on order to recondition the trucks. I have some gear lube and some other things coming. And once I get that, I'll continue on with this making lemonade from lemons. So we're going to get one good locomotive from two bad locomotives. Thanks for watching.